Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the F4U4B, which was released last update and has been requested quite a bit, so here it is. So, I've heard quite a few conflicting things about this aircraft. Some people are saying it's better than the FAF, some people are saying it's really, really clumsy and can't really do anything well. And for me personally, I think it did take a while to realise, or work out rather, how this vehicle works. But I really enjoyed it. Even stock, I had a great time. Usually with um, at least recent aircraft, I take them into air assault or have a few matches in arcade to get the few modifications and work out just sort of where it sticks up. But with this one, I played every match in RB. I really, really enjoyed it. So what you essentially have is an aircraft with fantastic guns. Not the most stable gun platform or a flight model but with a fantastic dive speed that can, at 5.7, can get you out of pretty much every engagement, unless you're fully up to it. But the advantage of a 5.7 American aircraft is that there aren't really many 6.7s in the game. You've got the rare event ME262, the Narwhal, and uh, the Yak-17s, oh, uh, Yak-15s, 17s. And because of that, you're not going to see many up tiers. I think genuinely, out of all of the games I played to spade this aircraft, I had one 6.7 game. It's just because there aren't really many 6.7 aircraft to force that into the matchmaker, so generally you're going to be in 5.7, 6.0 games, which you know really does help this aircraft, so I think it performs quite well there. Its maneuverability is okay. You can beat most things you see if you're clever about it. Um, but it's not an aircraft, I think, that is on the surface easy to fly. It's got a few quirks and you can't just really take it out without knowing what you're doing and expect to do well. So I have a couple of games today, I've got two. One of them's I think just sort of shows how much damage you can cause in a short amount of time and the other one I think shows a little bit about how the aircraft performs in terms of its flight model and where to position yourself in the map. As this aircraft does climb very well, it does have a um, supercharger, so it does help at about 3,000 meters. But you can generally position yourself above everyone, and it really does play to your advantage. You can control engagements quite well, and it's it's what I call um, herding. So if you position yourself above every aircraft you see, you can kind of herd them down or herd them into groups around your team, and you can definitely do that with this plane because you really need to be above everyone to form an engagement that you can pretty much reliably win. If you're above a plane, you're going to bleed your speed pretty quick trying to perform evasive maneuvers, so you are going to have to take that time to climb. So it is a support aircraft, it's not going to really do much early game, it's going to really make its mark mid and late game, where you can jump down from altitude and just shred people, because you're only going to need one pass. I've only, have a few, only had a few instances of sparks, so I think it really does work quite well. So, let's get into the first match. So, the first match we have is against Germany, and I've managed to climb quite high, possibly a bit too high, but with this aircraft I think you need to be kind of careful. I'm above everyone, and the fights have already started, there's a few little engagements about, and I'm pretty sure I'm above everyone. So I'm not really aiming to climb too much further, I'm just going to try and find a target and engage and I can see the bulk of the forces are over there by the rest of the aircraft and I'm just checking now to see how many I can see and how many are unaccounted for and there's about three or four aircraft I know that haven't been spotted and are possibly still climbing. So with those odds I think it's pretty safe to go in and try and cause some damage because that's just what this aircraft does. I mean, you've got A and M3s, which are the same guns that are on things like the Banshee, the Panthers, you know, 9.0 jet aircraft. And people say those guns are a bit unreliable, kind of hard to aim, but having those guns against props, which are a bit slower, and you can get nicer deflection angles, they absolutely shred planes. So that's a bit of a hidden advantage of this plane, I think. I mean, a lot of people kind of discount the guns, but they are very, very good. I rarely had any problems with them at all. So, I'm diving down now, I'm just trying to find a target because I want to cause a bit of damage, I've climbed a bit too far, and I think we've got this game in the bag just because of how low the Germans are. So, this match itself it doesn't really, I think, show how the aircraft can perform to its peak, 
but it does show that you can take advantage of other players and get a lot of kills and do a lot of damage too. So I'm just trying to pick a decent target at the moment. I think I'm going to go for one of the Fock Wolves or that Tower 152, but I'm not quite sure yet. I'm going to wait until I get a bit closer to pick a target of opportunity because I'm quick enough to make that decision and have enough speed to fall back on if I need it. I can see this Fock Wolf is climbing, so he's going to be, well, not really able to dodge very effectively. So just wait and get that very easy quick kill. Aim isn't too good, and, and that's down to the guns. I'm not very experienced with them. And you can see here, I'm in an 800 km an hour dive, tailing this 109k back to his base. So the speed you can build up is stable and you can really use it effectively. But the only thing is that you your rudder locks up quite bad. It almost acts like you don't have a rudder at all when you get to these speeds, so getting your guns on target is quite difficult. But you just need to list slowly into a target. So like this, I'm just sort of positioning myself where I think he's going to be and hoping he flies right into my guns because I can't adjust quick enough to really hit a target. So, in comes Adornia, and I'm gently feathering my elevator downwards so I can turn underneath him in the second he has to get a shot. And that way I'm delaying the turn so he doesn't have a nice profile shot to get any damage or any shots on me whatsoever. So I'm flying back towards the other aircraft, keeping my speed. I don't really want to turn with that Dornier because I can dodge his shots pretty effectively. So just flying in and picking what target to go after. The Focke Wolf has two planes on him, so I think I can just sort of <laughs> go for that Dornier. Hopefully get a nice easy kill, get some more RP. The Dornier is coming in, but I think at this time he's a bit too engaged with the other fighters, so I have an opportunity to lose some speed and pitch up and get another kill. So, as soon as I get the guns on target, the plane just falls apart. You can see just how good these guns are against slow aircraft. So, just a little bit of defensive flying to get underneath that Dornier. Not too difficult, and the Corsair can certainly do it, as it does keep uh, medium speeds quite well, i found. It doesn't bleed too badly. Try and get a few shots on the Dornier, but he's already going down. Not going to get the assist, sadly, but <laughs> can't be too greedy. So, in comes a Force Hen go upwards and roll around him, using the rudder a little bit to bleed some speed so I can sit on his tail. Snap my flaps off as the flaps are <laughs> quite weak and get a fourth kill. So that match I'm aware wasn't the most impressive in terms of anything I did, but you can get a lot of kills very quickly and get a nice amount of RP and I think this thing does work very well as a support aircraft because if you're flying with some friends, you know, they can perform all the maneuvers, get the aircraft lower and slower you can have that you know, split second on target to really do that damage, and that's really all it takes with an aircraft like this. The guns are just that effective. So, on to the next game. So, the next match is a little bit more difficult. Right off the bat, I had Germans above me and Germans on my altitude, so I had to be a bit more careful with how I played. I could see the tire was coming in, I didn't really want to engage him while he was above me, because he could have the energy advantage if he wanted to dive and, you know, pretty much did whatever he wanted with me, so I wanted to pick another target a bit lower and get a few kills and hopefully boom my way out. So, I see this 109 go in for a... just to kind of test the water, see if I can engage this guy or not. And he's diving a bit too far away and I don't really want to lose that much altitude. So, try a little bit of a spray because you really can with these guns. You have so much ammo. Another 109 comes in. I roll around and jink round right underneath his guns at the last minute. He follows me down and I pull to his negative, which usually forces people out of the engagement just like that, and he's no longer any problem because he can be engaged by the other fighters on my team. So I'm going to go again to try and engage this other 109. And I do get a very nice shot and probably on account of my poor aim and the netcode I do get a bit of a spark there, but you know, what are you going to do? happens, so I'm going to follow him around and try and engage him again. I'm a little bit too far away to make the guns work, so I'm just going to spray and hope I get a hit, but I can follow him down and close the gap pretty quickly, but I don't want to go right down just yet, just in case he makes a mistake. So I'm going to build up a little bit of speed and hope that he pitches up, which will let me have a head right on top of him, and he does. I do pitch up a bit too late, and I do allow him to get a few shots on which is a mistake on my part. I should have been watching 
uh, paying a bit closer attention so I could have pitched up sooner. But even so, he does score a few little hits, but they're not really going to be anything dangerous because the force of him shooting is going to push his aircraft down before he can really do enough damage. And I stall down a little bit too late, but I do get into an advantageous position over him very quickly, which means you know, he's not going to get out of this. So I roll back onto his tail, look around, see if anything's going to come onto me, and follow him down as I want this guy dead at this point. I've put too much effort in to really leave it. I'm trying to spray with the guns and get an easy, quicker kill before I go too close to the ground. But these guns aren't too easy to aim, and with the elevator rudder stiffening, it doesn't make for an easy kill. But thankfully, he rolled right in between my guns, and I got myself a kill. So, I'm going to quickly get some altitude back and engage those cluster of fighters behind me. I don't want to spend too long, because they might spread out by then. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to cause some damage. So, I'm going to come back in and focus on the 152, keeping my altitude as he doesn't really know how fast I am at this point and whether he can get away with pitching up to me or not. Now, as a player like that, I know he's not going to be silly, so I know the way I'm going to have to play around him. I pitch up, which I know he's not going to follow through because he's going to get him killed. Go right down very quickly, hoping that's what he was going to do, and thankfully he did, and get my speed back. He's very good at defensive flying, so it's kind of difficult to get my guns on, combined with my very poor aim. But thankfully, he presents me a very nice shot of the pilot, which I can get all four guns to converge on and knock him out. So, I've got a Fokker Wolf and a 109 behind me. Now, just one of those is problem enough, but with this case, I'm going to need to do something pretty special to survive this engagement, as one has a lot of energy and one can turn with me. So. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to wait until they're just close enough, get a little bit more speed, and turn at the right moment. And what this is going to do is I'm going to turn horizontally to get away from the guns and then turn upwards slightly. And this is going to make sure the Focke-Wolf doesn't get guns on and he bleeds speed very quickly. And with this 109, I can continue the engagement. As you can see right now, the Focke-Wolf I've brought up, which is going to bleed all of his speed. With my teammate coming in, he's not going to last very long, and it's just on the 109. Now, what I'm going to do here is a tactic I don't see people do very much. What I'm going to do is use my guns as an air brake. Because this is a, these guns are very powerful and they do have quite a lot of stopping power. So what I'm going to do is I know I'm not going to get round on him on time. So, I fire my guns here to make myself just that bit slower that I can roll round and get the engine fire that I need to knock him out. It's a little tip. I don't see anyone really use it. You can't use it on most planes, but on a plane like this with really powerful guns, you can use it as a little makeshift air brake, and you have the ammo needed to make it work. So, my teammate who came in traded with the Fokker Wolf, and that's all of the dangers away from me this game. This last Fokker Wolf, I go over and try and help the engagement, and just smoothen it out for my teammate over there, but that's pretty much the end of the game. So, this plane is... it's a bit of a strange one. Its firing platform isn't great, it has very, very weak flaps, as you can see through this gameplay, I'm absolutely awful with deploying them at the right times. But it does do a lot of things very well. It's offensive when it needs to be, and it can be defensive when it needs to be too. The only real danger you have is being below anyone. Because the nature of this plane, you keep mid-speed quite well, so between, say, 500 and 400 you can remain in that kind of spectrum with it decently well. You know, so you can do those maneuvers, you can bleed speed, you can you can make it work. But if you're any slower than that, you can't really do anything. Your landing flaps are good, but you need to be very careful when you deploy them because they will rip off very, very quickly. So, it's not as defensive as it needs to be, and it can't use its speed to a great advantage, only because when you do start using that speed to get the dive away, you are losing everything. You do have like a get out of jail free card, which is your dive speed. You can pretty much exit any engagement if you're at 6.0 uh, pretty decently. But then that's all of your advantage is gone. There's nothing you can do after that, you're stuck. So it does have a bit of a lifeline in that regard where you can get out of a situation that you know you're not you know you're not gonna win. And not every aircraft can do that, so that is certainly a plus. But the other side of that is that if you are diving on an enemy and you need to get your guns on target, 
if your enemy does pull some defensive maneuvers, like goes up, goes to the side, your rudder doesn't work at high speed. So getting the gun platform level and getting yourself into a situation where you can reliably shoot someone isn't very easy. And you're going to need to hope that whatever you're facing just kind of lists slowly into your guns rather than you following them through an engagement because you're going to lose all of your speed, you're going to lose your advantage, and you don't really want to break that dive before killing your plane because you're not going to have enough speed to boom back upwards and continue a fight. So it's not a reliable way to kill someone. You know, if you're not very confident, maybe you're, you know, you don't play the game every day like I do, you know, maybe it's not um, uh, an easy thing to do. You do need to get kind of lucky with that. And your choices are, after you dive on a plane and you choose how to engage it, you can either follow through and try turning with them and get that kill, because you will get that kill. Your guns are too good and you have enough chances to take a plane out. But after that, you're stuck. You're at low altitude, you're on low speed, anyone can do what they want with you. Or you can continue that dive, go back up, get some more altitude, get some more speed in the when you dive back down, and you can take a plane out. So you can reliably get one or two kills like this. You have enough speed that you can build up in a dive to cause a lot of damage, but it's just you're not going to be very useful after that. But as a plane, this plane is really good. You know, you have a very high climb rate. You have really, really good guns. You know, guns that you see on jets at 9.0. And I think people discount those guns quite a bit. It's because you know they're a bit less reliable. They spark quite a lot. But what people don't really understand is that they are ANM3s. You know, they're, they're late. They're late cannons. But with uh, jets against jets, uh, they're really, really quick. And with cannons the way they are, they're going to spark a lot more. You're maybe not going to get as many profile shots. But with props. The planes that you're fighting are slow enough that you can get all the guns on target and they're going to hit hard enough to really do that damage, and they do. I mean, hopefully the kills that I've shown uh, today, you don't need a lot of time on target to get those pilot snipes, knock those wings off. It doesn't take a lot at all because the planes are just a lot slower. And when you have such powerful guns like that, you can make quick work of anything. You know, bombers, fighters, whatever you like, you know, you're going to take it out. But... You only really have enough speed and energy for a few engagements. You know, you're going to have to be careful when you engage aircraft. You can't just, you know, dive down, make a few turns, get a kill, and then boom back up and come right back down because you're not going to have enough speed. You're not going to build it up quick enough. You know, your roll rate's good. You can turn. You can't turn with everything, mind, but you can turn with most things you're going to see, like one uh, nines, fuck wolves, um, la nines. You can turn with as well sort of, you know, it's not super reliable, but it's something you can try if you're more confident. So, I think this aircraft is better in the support role, say if you're playing with some friends, because they can do the work getting the aircraft just slow enough where your guns are, you know, idiot-proof. You just need to spray around them and you're going to get a kill, because with those guns they are quite inaccurate. So, you don't need to have perfect aim because some of the rounds are going all over the place and you are going to take you you are going to hit what you're shooting at and because of how powerful the guns are it doesn't take a lot of rounds on target so the guns are hard to shoot and easy to shoot at the same time you know it's it's kind of a tricky thing to explain and i hope that uh, explanation does do it justice that the inaccuracy does help and i think that is a real selling point of this aircraft as well um of just how much damage you can actually do. So I really do think it's a good plane. Its firing platform isn't great. I think the Bearcat certainly does have the advantage in that regard. It does have a very stable gun platform. This plane doesn't. At high speeds and low speeds, you are going to struggle to get those kills on unless you really are confident with the aircraft. So you do need backup with this plane. But I think the way to fly it essentially is, you know, to climb to altitude, and you can herd the planes down, you can take your time, you pick your targets, you have that advantage of having a really good climb rate. Now even against things like Germans or Russians, there are only going to be a few things on your level. So you can choose your engagements. You know, if you make a mistake and you want to get out of there, you can use a dive speed to get away from pretty much anything you're going to see at, you know, about 6.0. And I think that's where this aircraft works. You know, you can take point early game, you can wait, you know, pick your time to go down and actually cause an engagement, you know, have a fight. And even though I'm, you know, I'm quite an experienced pilot at this point, I've played pretty much everything in the game, I, um, 
the only times I've died so far have been in head-ons and uh, got killed by a B6 a few times. And I think that shows that you can get away from engagements pretty well. You know, you do have that one chance to get out of there and, you know, go back to base, recline, re-engage, or just leave the match if you want, you know. It's, it's an aircraft that has a lot of options you can take. And I think it's really up to you and how your playstyle works of which one of those advantages to take advantage of yourself. Is if you work well in a team, this plane works. If you want to you know, play on your own, you can take that time to climb up to altitude, dive down and get some kills. You can do that. If you want to get one or two more kills and then get out of there and dive back to your base, you know, re-engage, re-arm, you can do that too. So I think this plane does suit every player in no matter what play style you want to try. And you can certainly make good use of the guns, good use of the flight model, um, if you like. It's not a, it's not a like a brain dead easy plane to fly, but if you know what you're doing and you're a bit confident with it, you can really make this plane work. And with all of that said, I think I'm going to rate this aircraft an eight out of ten. So thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. Um, sorry if I'm repeating myself quite a bit back there. I just sort of have lots of ideas floating around in my head, and I, you know I don't script these, so it's like. If I have something pop up, I'll say it, and then it's probably something I've said about five times already, so I apologise for that. I am quite new to this whole thing, so it might take a while for me to uh, knock that habit, but I will try and um, hopefully make these a bit more streamlined in the future. So, yeah, I um, hope you enjoyed the video. I'm really close to 1,500 subscribers, which is ridiculous. I never thought I'd get that high anyway, but when I do... Um, get to that number, it means I can get Gaijin support, so I can get a few more Golden Eagles to get some Ace Crews, and when that happens, I will be creating a schedule. So, a plane in a tank video every week, reliably, and I will stick to that. So, you know, if there's anyone that you think might be interested in what I make, uh, please send them this video, or send them any video. Because the sooner I get to that point, the sooner I can make uh, better content, I hope, at least. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, if you have any criticism, feedback, please let me know, I'd love to hear it, I'd love to improve the channel, and I just really hope you enjoyed. So, thank you very much, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.